Norman Carlberg is an American sculptor and printmaker. His work has been featured at the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Architecture Gallery at Yale University, and the Hirshhorn Museum in Washington, D.C. In today's lesson, we'll create a 3D printable model inspired by one of Carlberg's most elegant sculptures called Minimal Surface Form 6. Let's begin with an empty scene in Blender 2.8. Go to the Scene Context tab in the Properties panel and click the arrow next to Units. Unit System should be set to Metric and set the Length parameter to use Millimeters. Change the unit scale to 0.001. Go to the Overlays popover and also change the scale to 0.001 in that parameter also. Press Shift A for the Add menu and choose Cube from the Add Mesh options. Change the size of the cube to 10.0 millimeters. Press Tab for the Edit Mode. With all vertices selected, press Ctrl F to bring up the Face menu. Then select Poke Faces from the list. Select any corner vertex on the model. Press Shift G for Select Similar. Choose Amount of Connecting Edges from the options. Press the X key for the Delete menu. Then choose Dissolve Edges from the options. Press 1 on the number pad keys to switch to front orthographic view. Then press 2 on the keyboard for edge select mode. Press Shift and Alt, then click the edge at the bottom left of the current view. Use your middle mouse button to pivot your view around to the next side and click the edge in the same direction as before. Do this around all four sides of the object and be sure you're holding Shift and Alt each time to select the entire edge loop. Press 7 on your number pad for the top view. Select the edge in the same direction as before, holding Shift and Alt while you click. Hold Control while you press 7 on the number pad again. This will bring up the bottom view. Repeat the same edge selection as before in the same direction as before. With all these edges selected, press N for the sidebar menu. In the Item tab, change the Mean Crease to 1.0. Press A to select all, then right-click to bring up the context menu and choose Subdivide. Change the number of cuts to 2. Select one of the crease-marked edges. Then Shift G, choose Crease from the menu. Control B to create a bevel on the edges. You can use your mouse wheel to add an extra segment. In the bevel parameters, change the offset width to 0.15 millimeters, and be sure you have two segments. Now select only the center edge loop segment in each bevel. Holding Shift and Alt while clicking an edge in the segment will allow you to select the entire edge loop. With these edge loops selected, go to the sidebar menu once again and change the mean crease value to 1.0. Now select any one of the crease marked edges on the model. Shift G, crease, to select all of them. Press 1 on the keyboard to convert the selection to vertex mode. Control I to invert that selection. Bring up the context menu with your right mouse button and choose smooth vertices from the list. Increase the repeat parameter to 100, or adjust it until you no longer see any effect on the model. 
Now press Shift Z to toggle on the wireframe view. This will allow us to make selections through to the back facing elements. Box select all the vertices at each corner point of the model. There should be three vertices at each point. You can activate the box select by pressing B on the keyboard, or you can cycle through all the different types of selection options using W. Once you have all the corner points selected, go once more to the sidebar properties and change mean crease to 1.0. Now toggle back to Solid Shade View by pressing Shift-Z again. Notice that our bevel operation has introduced four separate Engon faces to our model's topology. Select the vertex at the end of the center edge loop on the bevel. Hold Shift and click the vertex parallel to this on the other side of the Engon face. Press J to connect the two vertices with an edge. Now repeat this process on all three of the remaining Engon faces. Press 2 on the keyboard for Edge Select Mode. Select one of the new edges we just created in the last operation. Shift G for select similar and choose the length option. Now go over to the sidebar properties again and this time change the mean crease to 0.5. Press 3 for face select mode. Select only the polygons that are on the inside of each bevel. Now go to the Materials tab in the Properties panel. Create a new material. Change the base color to black or a color of your choosing other than the default. Click the Assign button. Now hold Ctrl and press the I key to invert the face selection. In the Materials tab, click the plus sign next to the first material, then click the New button to create another new material. This time you could leave the base color white and press the Assign button. In the Viewport Shading options at the top, click the Look Dev icon. If you're satisfied with your color choices, press the Tab key to exit the edit mode. In the Modifiers tab, go to Add Modifier, Subdivision Surface. Change the subdivisions for both the Render and Viewport to at least four. If you're planning to export this model for 3D printing, and you have enough system resources, I might suggest increasing subdivisions to 5 or 6 iterations for the smoothest possible result. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and learned something new. Please consider subscribing to our channel and click the bell icon to be notified of our latest content. See you in the next video.